Good evening, everyone. We have two old men sitting by the campfire, ready to talk about Canadian invasions and other things of note. I mean, it is a thing of note. Do you not think so? I mean, I did title the episode Conquering Canada. <laughs> well, I, I can definitely say I did not conquer canada this weekend canada got the best of me but that's okay it was a fun time how dare you sir how <laughs> dare you hey look when you don't get enough reps in with a like like we've said a hundred times you need to practice 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 get reps in with your army i went up there with a list that i did not have enough reps in with to remember every nuance every game and that hurt me 100 percent I can understand that because it, it was a big deal. Anytime you play, did not you know? I need to be able to dig out. We talked about this a million times. You know, yep. knowing the the ability. It's not when things are going good. It's when things are going shitty. You know what I mean? You want to make sure that you know how to like dig out shit. Yeah. Oh, Kr, you had one of the cataract surgeries done two days ago. Yes. You're not sure that's a good thing. You know what? I'm happy for you. The surgery going well. Also, oh, come on, man. <laughs> but the, uh, <laughs> all of the stuff and some of this. Uh, tell me about the tournament, brother. You went up to Canada. Where were so, you? Uh, and what happened? went up to Canada with Jim Seidlinger, uh, who hasn't played in a ton of events uh but jim is a phenomenal painter uh brad may remember him from salt city as the death guard player who won wooden spoon yes uh, and and also second best painted so it tells you like super fun guy uh we went up and we had a grand time uh the all is dust gt is every year the same weekend as adepticon so it'll be one of those things i go to probably every other year because i'm gonna try and alternate back and forth between the two because I really loved the All is Dust GT. Um, Nick and his team put on a really fun event. Uh, it was in Petawawa, Ontario, Canada, which means it's about an hour and a half outside of Ottawa, a little west of Ottawa. Um, absolutely fantastic. 56-player event. Uh, there was 18 of the top 20 Canadian players there. Um, so it was a stacked field. There was members of Art of War, a member of Team USA, and almost all of Team Canada, along with a, just a plethora of really good players who were there to play 40K and have a good time. Um, I went up with Unending Swarm. Um, it's a list that is, in, in my opinion, more of a team's list than a singles list because it has some really bad matchups, as I'll kind of go into that. <laughs> um, but it was a super fun event, ton of fun. Uh, my list was a little bit different than some of the unending swarm lists as I kind of focused a lot on the small stuff. Uh, I used very little in the way of characters. Uh, well, so, I only what, ran the... so what was your, your plan for this? Like going into it, what was the game plan for my game plan the was mass, mass shit? Spread the board, uh, take primary away from my opponents. And, uh, and my initial plan was to go uh, fixed with engage and behind enemy lines um, because it's fairly easy to score with the amount of movements you have with gargoyles and, you know, the biovore and stuff coming in. But when we got there and talking with players in the morning, it was like, oh, yeah, if I play you, I just have to screen out your biovore and that'll cut half your points down right off the get go with secondaries. And that was kind of a given consensus amongst players. They were like, oh, yeah, if we play Brian, we have to do this. And I'm like, all right, well, I'm not going to be able to quite go with the fixed objective route. Um, in the first round, I uh, drew uh, Mr. Marqua, uh, Eric Marqua, and one of the better Canadian players. And immediately I knew I was in a lot of trouble when I looked at his list and saw six Dread Knights, uh, Land Raider, Redeemer, and three Armagers. And I went, oh, this is going to be super good right now. Um, so it was one of those things where I knew, but like my plan was spread the board. 
uh, take primary uh, because most of my models have OC2 and I have a ton of movement shenanigans. I can steal objectives, move around on objectives and really, you know, deny primary, deny primary, deny primary and just control the board. That was my goal. That was my idea. I wasn't going to be a metric, do a metric ton of killing. I wasn't what, what was up, it, real quick. Sorry. What was the, what was the terrain set up? Uh, WTC. So you had a little bit of difference in boards. Yep. So there was uh, three different boards they were using or three different layouts from it. Um, they were the new WTC layouts. The terrain was absolutely fantastic. Um, and they were also doing WTC scoring. Um, just a super ton of fun. I looked at the WTC scoring differential and was like, look, not I'm not going to get a ton of 20-0s, but I thought I could get a lot of like 14s um, in, in decent scoring and you know do well. Um, I don't know if anyone's played against the uh, entire side of Dread Knights yet, but when you're running a ton of small bugs and there's only so much hiding you can do when they have movement and go first that you get a lot of bugs roasted by flamers, especially <laughs> when they roll exceptionally high on everything. Um, and I, I did good kind of using my neural lictors to push them back and out a little bit to keep them a little off a few of the points. Uh, unfortunately, when you have to make 16 saves on two different neural lictors and you fail all of them, but one, uh, they don't live. <laughs> have you thought <laughs> of rolling me. better? <laughs> uh, I have, but I decided against it that round. <laughs> <laughs> I also I also decided that once this weekend. So yeah, <laughs> I went. Nah, I don't want to roll good. Uh, but it was a fun game. Um, I did lose twenty zero because I just it was just one of those times where I got behind the eight ball and could not catch back up. But you know, I in in a standard game, I I kept the score within reason. Um, it, it was an okay loss in my opinion. That was a bad matchup for me. Um, then my second round, I went into orcs, um, and I a hundred percent played the deny primary game. Um, didn't kill any of his battle wagons, any of his, you know, big stuff, but I kept him off every point. Um, really did a good job controlling the objectives. Uh, it was a minor win on my behalf because, you know, orcs do slap and can kill little stuff fairly well. Um, <clears throat> But with respawning uh, and all the movement, it was really good. Especially after you lose the wog turn. They lose so much. It's not as much damage against you. It's just the invuln and everything else. Or all of a sudden, things like yep. exocrines are just picking up dudes, you know, left and right. Yeah. <coughs> um, absolutely fun time. Uh, I had a great game in that one. In the third round, I played against World Eaters. Um I pushed his scout moves back with all the neuro lictors and kept him back and then decided that I wanted to fail every save again. I'm seeing <laughs> and, a trend uh, here. Yeah, I, I did well there. And then uh, two exocrines and a maliceptor shooting a six man exalted uh, eight bound squad. And I killed one. That was, that was good times. <laughs> I um, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, killed, killed, killed. Let me stress, killed one. That seems worse uh, than Asa. Yeah, I, I actually killed more in close combat with Termagons than I did with shooting at them. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> that game was a, a close loss because I was able to score a lot on primary uh, and deny some secondary stuff. And that's a big deal with the list. Actually, go over your list real quick before we go over the rest of the games. Because your sure, list so has a ton of, even if you're getting your ass kicked, scoring potential. So the list I brought on that one was the Death Leaper, uh, Neuro Tyrant, uh, 20 Gargoyle, 10 Gargoyle, 10 Gargoyle, a unit of 20 Hormigons, uh, three units of 20 Termagants uh, with uh, two Strangle Webs in them, which were Clutch, uh, the Biovore, two Exocrines, a Maliceptor, a unit of Neurogons, three Neuro Lictors, and two Pyrovores. Um, I can say that once every once I knew that everyone was going with the got to screen out against the Biovore, got a screen out against the Biovore, and trust me, everyone did and did a remarkable job. It was absolutely fantastic on their behalf. Every it, opponent made it good is. Decisions. I like that they're like, screw you, I'll screen out a twenty five millimeter base. It, it it did happen. I mean, that did allow me in a couple of the games to kind of score a little more than I probably should have. Um, 
but that was fine. I also had a Lictor and a Ripper Swarm um, in the list for the last 80 points there. Um, the the list was fun. Uh, it had a good time. I did find myself that I a little bit too much on the Termagants. Uh, I would have rather had another unit of Hormagants because Hormagants were really key. Um, let's see. In my fourth round, I honestly cannot remember what I was playing because I may or may not have had like five ten shot scotches or uh, vodkas at that point so and that was let me tell you all is dust if you would like some cheap drinks drinks were super cheap <laughs> it was a good that was really nice um and i probably the best game i played was my fifth round on sunday morning because they do five they did four on saturday and then uh two on sunday um i played against a sisters player and we played a game where he didn't waste shots shooting at my gaunts because he didn't want me to get the extra movement. I never charged him in the game. And we <laughs> honestly, it was such a tactical movement game with move blocking and his couple selective charges. And it was just one of those games where it was super fun. Um, I, I won fairly handedly because I denied him primary on three turns. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, in my mind, you said that, and I just imagined the memes where you see the two dogs barking at each other, and then they open up the gate or the door or whatever, and then they don't do anything. That's what I see your two armies doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, Brian, the other guy's 40K. He said it was great to meet you, and might have told him that Brad in the pod was okay or something like that. Boo. Yeah. <laughs> So it was, it was definitely, uh, it was great meeting a lot of the guys that I haven't met from Canada. I knew a lot of people there, but meeting even more was fantastic. If you get a chance to run up to Canada for an event, you're just going to have a good time because everybody was absolutely super friendly, very outgoing, played really, really well. Nobody like got anxious or try hardy or anything like that. It was super fun. It was just such a good time. And uh, Jim said the same thing who went up with me. Um, it was it was just a great time. It was just it was just a fun event. Yes, it was competitive. Yes, there was a lot of good players there. Yes, there was a lot of strong lists there. But man, it was a good time. I mean, and that's what you're looking for, to be honest with you. It's just. It's fun first, everything else second. I mean, I'm competitive, but it's still fun first. So. And I got to say that I think. Ha over half the tournament went to the same restaurant after the event. See, I love that right there. That That's why we want to do that, man. I still want to get everybody back together, going to the same places. Cause I hate that we scatter so much nowadays. Yeah, it, was, it was definitely a fun time. Um, the thing I can say the most that I learned about that was I needed a little bit more gargoyles, which shouldn't be a surprise. They are super strong. Don't listen to Brad ever. Don't listen to Brad. <laughs> That's Brad, hurtful. We had, we had, I had 40 in the list, and I was like, man, I, after playing it a couple times, I was like, man, if I had just got one of those uh, that one of those other 10-man units up to a 20, I'd be much happier. All I'm saying, Brian, is gargoyles are just like cowbell. You can never have enough. I, I completely agree. I'm thinking, of, like, I, as I'm sitting here revamping the list and looking at things, I really like the Hormagons because they were they were really clutch in a, in a few instances. Um, the Maliceptor was super good, which I, I underestimate him every time I use him and he's just better than I anticipate every time. So like, as I, as I look at revamping this list and I'm thinking of revamping it for teams, cause I think this is much more a teams list. Um, I think there's other you, things that could be better. It, well, in teams, uh, I like it in teams a lot, but there's a lot of lists I like that in better teams, but you can literally pick on people that don't have the volume to get through you. You know what I mean? There's a lot of lists that just run out of shit as you slowly nickel and dime them away and just keep bringing back huge, go, you know, broods of Hormagods or whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just throwing stuff on the board. You can really just slog somebody down, especially armies, you know, loaded up with last cannons and multi meltas and shit like that. You're like, cool. Yeah. You well, killed like Billy. <laughs> In the game versus sisters, the guy killed a uh, unit of 20 gargoyles and I was bringing him back on the regen on turn four and he was just toad touching an objective. 
And it was like, okay, I bring in the 20 gargoyles. I shoot you. I move six inches forward and I put six of them on the objective, putting OC 12 on there. It's so bonkers. <laughs> and I was just like, he was like, oh, that that's a thing. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so it was, uh, it was very, it was very, uh, the gargoyles are stupid good. Uh, the pyrovores were okay. The neurolictors were good, but I think three of them was a little too many. Um, pyrovores for me have just been in a weird spot. It, it looks like they should be better than they are, but because they're so slow, they're never in the right spot. So the big thing with them is I was putting them in reserve and bringing them from strategic reserve um, to hit some crucial stuff to give Ignore cover to the Exocrines, which was really handy. Um, it also can kill you know a little bit of chaff with its flamer, which was fine. Uh, the big thing is they're massively large. Right, they have a big base. They can move. True story. When you're playing the swarm, on the other hand, sometimes they're in the way. I could see that. Just, you know, and so I was like, I thought two of them was a bit too much. I'm, I'm probably going to go down to one. I may cut it and just add more gargoyles in the 50 I'm intending on running. I might go up to 60. We'll see. Uh, but so far, it's doing, it's doing really, really well. And the thing is, is I still think that the Tyranids have a lot of play. It's just we were talking and he goes, has anybody had any success besides Lennon? I put in pro, but like the Tyranids yep. aren't a forgiving army. So you no. really do have to be on your game. And that's tough over six, eight, nine, however many games you got to play for right. a big tournament. And like I'll give Brandon, who went to Adepticon and played four games in a day, a ton of credit for being undefeated at the end of the day. Playing four games in a day twice especially I had to play eight it, for two days yeah for, for him that was eight for me playing four games in one day was like ooh, this is hard on this old man's body <laughs> well i don't it's one of the reasons i don't play in champs anymore at adepticon is because it was just too much to do uh eight games and then team tournament you know what i mean yep. uh but also missed out a lot like my favorite things over the weekend were the the last minute painting was transporting that stupid goddamn display board and getting my head kicked in while we were in the, I was in the back of the U-Haul. Uh, you know what I mean? Just hanging out, you know, getting shit together, you know, getting everything team wise together. Also, I have no idea. I had to clip. I, I clipped a plane on the screen real quick because I didn't know what it was because I forgot. I have one of my scenes is big ass plane. I was like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> but uh, I had so much fun just getting ready, hanging out, you know, getting getting the army together and shit like that. That was just such a great time. It's yeah. just, and you think about it, what's the most fun? Hanging out with your friends, you know what I mean? Like, and, and the one thing I can say is if you have a friend that likes to go to your local GTs, and you're traveling to something, and you can just say, hey, look, come along. Don't worry about winning the games. Just come, have fun, hang out, meet new people, and have a good time. The minute you bring that person with you, like, I'm going to relay this to Jim, uh, who went and legitimately was like, yeah, I know I'm not running the best list, but he he brought this beautifully depainted defiler for Death Guard. And he freehand painted a Nurgle showing its butt cheeks, like, very <laughs> sassy. <laughs> And it was awesome. And everybody's like, have you seen the cheeky Nerling? Like the entire place was talking about it because he just, he came to have some fun and everyone who played against him said they had a good time. He had a great time, but bring those people with you. And then the next time you want to go to an event where you're like, Hey, yeah. And you know, I, Jim was already like, when's the next event that you're going to when you headed out next? Cause he wants to go again. Cause it was fun. You know, it, plan those things bring new people with you uh you will grow your community beyond leaps and bounds by doing so it's just having a good time is number one you know what i mean it's just like i said my best memories were none of the games even though i didn't have a bunch of bad games or anything it was all the the hanging out screwing around you know what i mean the the after the games the before the tournament you know what i mean that oh, was all the good shit and, and and by the way brad although i wished you luck at adepticon i did for the teams but if you go back and look at the stream, I said, you, you, they were like, who do you think is going to win teams? And I said, the Tiki gods, I may have called that. I mean, Jared and the boys, like, it was so funny. I, I love when I talk to Jared about games because it's always, 
either we're going to win and then they all lose or they're going to lose and then they all win. He came up multiple times and was like, man, another table looks like it's going to get smashed, this and that. And then, you know, half hour later, he walks up. They made every save. We won by 10. <laughs> you know, it came up. <laughs> uh, but they they crushed. They went like 8-1-1 one, and one yeah. in, in the battle. And they, of course, had great soft scores. They had a great-looking army. Uh, they always are going to get Max and Spirit theme. You know what I mean? Oh. So when they didn't get Hobby, or I'm sorry, not Hobby, but Spirit, I looked at him. I was like, how did you not use win the award? He's like, he goes, fingers crossed. I'm hoping for another award. I go, well, would you? I didn't know exactly what he went. And then when he said he was 8 one I looked over it out. I go, eh, we didn't win this year. Yeah, I mean, he's like, what? I go, dude, those are 8 one and one And their soft scores are always great you know what i mean they're good guys they're gonna get sportsmanship theme everything else they're you know what i mean he's always yeah, you have alan on your team so the odds of everything you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh all i have to say is every year brandon and alan play in teams and eloise and i play in teams on a different table and i'm just saying if you want to come for funsies Eloise in my table is pretty goddamn fun. <laughs> Absolutely. We were, <laughs> I have a great story. I had that bad dice rolling game, uh, at, you know, after. Holy crap. Eloise put her evil dice on me for the next game because in our game, she couldn't make a damn save at all. One unit of race killed two piranhas, a sky ray, and something else because she was failing like 90% of her saves. And apparently that evil soaked into my dice because the very next game, four ups were the thing. <laughs> well, you know, every once in a while, someone will roll a ton of dice against you. And it's like, make 37 saves. And you're like, I don't want to count that many dice. And you ask them very politely, hey, can I just roll the dice you have in your tray? And this guy was like, yeah, sure. So I rolled his dice and I failed the statistical average amount of dice. The next time he picked up the dice, he was like, why did I roll ones and twos? And I'm like, I, not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> so I love this best moment of the weekend. Brad Chester calling me drunk at 1.30 in the morning, asked me to come play board games. There's nothing wrong with middle of the morning board games. It might be my favorite Adepticon thing. It's just hanging out. But they have so many tables set up all over the place, you know, in front of the restaurant, in the lobby and all that. It's just there's always somebody doing something. Uh, team tournament. I'll give you the right care for sure. That is true. <laughs> he goes, you basically killed Rob Bear. I did see the video. Kenny pulled me over and was like, here's a video of Rob. And Rob was, oh no, what happened? I hung out with Brad. <laughs> like, whoa, whoa, what were you thinking? <laughs> so... I also showed up on Saturday morning at Sparks's. Uh, at, I walked in the door at 7 a.m., so it was a long night. So, teams, what did we play against? We played Necrons, played Canopic Court, all four. We played all four uh, Catan. So our whole deal was the War in Heaven, so we wanted to have uh, a Catan kind of deal. It was one of our biggest themes, you know, as the Star Gods were. The, the, the kind of deciding factor of that whole deal so we run best Cenos. we were second we got second overall and we had some pretty great games over the course of we played cooley and the boys kareem and uh the, the, the tyler combo in our last game and i couldn't ask for a better you know fifth game you know you, you know you don't want that last game to be the sweaty game because two people are doing well we had such a crazy, yeah, man, do whatever you want kind of game. <laughs> let's let's have a great time. So we played them. Uh, we, I played Brandon's team. I think we just auto pair into each other every year now. So it's just it, it's now tradition that I play Brandon and I played against each other. So I'm sorry, I don't play against him. He plays against Alan, and I play over against Eloise. So it, it's it's. <laughs> As exactly as it should be, we had a uh, we had some different matches. We had some guys playing some some hybrid lists and stuff like that, and those are always entertaining when you have a thousand points of two different factions uh, with whatever their story was. But the way they play together is so 
different than, you know what I mean, a standard 2,000 point army. Oh, Kevin Smith with a super chat, 499. New Sagador model pitch? Brother Corp Bulu with Sagador Guard Jetpack. Will Lyle play it? You know what? You guys still have to go on the Corbulu versus non Corbulu death match of Blood Angels. So I will continue to keep dodging you because I enjoy watching you and Alan yell at each other. <laughs> it's fantastic. They're just it, it so is worth the loud. price of admission just for that. Uh, I think the best thing, uh, their team had the best nine inch markers, uh, which were just giant nine inch dicks. <laughs> which said this is actually what nine inches looks like so <laughs> it was brutal man that is true Randy goes i played 13 games over the weekend i know dude that's why i don't champs anymore exactly not including yeah. board Brandon, games again congratulations man that is a gauntlet to go through of stuff and then you know to play tj in the final rounds after playing seven games prior to that had to be very taxing because i know tj is a really good good player so congratulations man absolutely congratulations again um, it was it's always such a good time i'll never miss a death again i just i enjoy the teams is my favorite probably my favorite tournament it's you know theme painting sports every you know what i mean you have to do a little bit of everything and that's why I like it so much. <laughs> hey, for the fix my list thing, is there a separate place to put teams list and what's in the team or just a norm? Just put a note on it. I'm doing it Tuesday. Um, as long as I don't... Hold on. I, I might be lying here. Give me one second because I want to be an adult. Uh, Tuesday. I will not be doing it Tuesday. I will be doing it Wednesday. I'll do it with Brandon. Because the... Uh, I will be in... Testing. I might be back. There's a small chance it's Tuesday, but it's probably going to be Wednesday. I have like a lot. I have a lot of me getting jammed in a tube with a lot of stuff on my head, so I don't know how long that's going to be. And it's up in Ann Arbor. And it's true. The TG game was only one and a half rounds. Uh, it's a thing, you know. Don't share my secrets. So it's the thing is, is that you have to. We were talking about it today earlier. When you go to a tournament. A big tournament. You're going to your LVOs, your Adepticon, you know, any of those big events where you have to play a lot of rounds. You have to have a little bit of luck and you have to get a couple games where you finish quickly. You just need a little bit of juice. You know what I mean? I I can't imagine myself grinding out, you know, eight or nine games of going to time and still being at my best. Whew. Whew. That's brutal sauce, man. But um when are you going to come with a team? I want to see you at uh, Adepticon Teams bringing that mojo. <laughs> uh, I think next year we're going to do a team. I, I have a I have a good strong feeling that we know who the team is right now, so we'll we'll be putting that together probably in the next few weeks. Because I kind of want to come back to our Du Bois style of stuff with the big crazy. Oh man, I used to love this shit that you guys came with. They're going to be like big big stuff. Uh, real quick on the wall. Any thoughts on doing a stream just based on armies and teams, like submitting the team comp without a list? 100% actually. We, I could do that. Oh, I could talk teams all day. Because one of the biggest things on team is you, you a lot of times have a team composition. And right, hell, Brian and I were talking about that not that long ago. Uh, he yep. was talking about his Tiernans. We were like, could we just take five lists that are, you know, 200 models? Because you can trap people in bad matches that they don't have any ability to do anything to. So 100%. They did the exact opposite uh, several times at WTC, where a lot of the teams brought just big guys. All prime marks, all knights, and stuff like that. So, Oh, 100%, man. There's a 100% Corey, uh, 200 model crew, 200 crew model armies. I might put that together in multiple. I think the crew detachment's legit. I was saying that earlier today. Uh, we'll talk about it on Sunday. Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But the, the big thing is, is that anytime you can put damage behind a horde, that's why right now it's hard for the Tyranids because they have a great horde. They have some damage. But man, if you can put a horde and then have a lot of damage, which the Tau can do, I think that list is going to be gross. I, I do. It, it's going to be nasty. When yeah, if the if the Malaceptor had better than 18 inch range, then I'd be 
if you had the Exocrine and the Malice Scepter both have 36, it would change the whole dynamic of that army. Oh, yeah, it'd be crazy. It'd be ridiculous. Yeah. I, I still think the Tyranids are good. I think the Tyranids suffered from coming out early. And yeah, I mean, it happened the Necrons in the last edition. Right. I, and I assume there'll be points adjustments and some tweaks and changes here to a few things. But I think they're still viable. I mean, they the unending swarm did well this last week, and I want to say it had it had like a 56, 58 percent win rate. Um, invasion fleet, especially where I was in Canada, it it went uh, I think four one or three one and two, and both of its wins that were draws could have gone either way. As I watched uh, two of the games, uh, or two, I, I watched two of his games, one of his draws. And it was, it was a really good list. It was just different. Um, he made a, a y y YOLO move to try and kill a Nemesis Dread Knight with a Norn Emissary and then was like, oh, that was probably a horrible mistake because <laughs> he didn't kill it. <laughs> and, you know, then he just got smoked. But uh, it, it it has potential. There's There's a lot of legs there. It's just you have to play every game super tactical. Yeah. And the thing, it's funny because I've I've made decisions on that. And that's a real thing. I mean, obviously, between the two of us, we have health issues, yes. But, like, I do make a lot of decisions on what I'm going to take the tournaments based on can I play this at a high level for, you know, eight games, nine games, whatever, you know what I mean, depending on the tournament. I, I, I will take the Unending Swarm to Teams events. I will take it to a five-round event. Probably wouldn't take it to a... Uh, you know, six round or better event again, because it's just, it's a grind to play. It, it's brutal because you're at your, you end up at your worst when you need to be at your best, when you're playing in the semis and the finals, you know what I mean? Your last games where you're mm -hmm. playing probably the best players you're going to play. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're at your worst. So it's, it's a big deal on that. It, it, figuring out what you're going to play is a big thing on that. Yep. <clears throat> if hordes become a thing, three telemons of double cannons, 72 shots fuck it i can see that uh you know and the thing is is like don't let people tell you and i'm huge on this by the way don't let people tell you not to take some set too play your fun shit make make the best thing that you love to play don't make something that you hate to play that's good you know what i mean it's just there's a fine line between you know trying to win it's one of the main reasons i took orcs to lvo wanted to have something that i really enjoyed playing and i thought was pretty good you know what i mean so like you have to find that you're you're happy you had to find your joy yep that's like the one thing i can say about this if i would have if i would have read the player packet correctly because i read the player packet but i didn't really look at the rounds and i would have saw that it was four rounds on saturday i'd have gone like oh yeah maybe i should not bring an ending swarm because boy let me tell you in game four that was that was brutal it was it was a it was rough. My back was screaming at me. <laughs> I would sorry. I just think the wall wrong. Play stuff that sucks to play and is bad. <laughs> uh, Jordan, hey Kings, what does a guy have to go go blue to get another edition of that juicy juicy fix my list? I'll have a fix my list up last week. I've been uh, I've been falling apart a little bit, so I have not been uh, streaming as much. But I will be trying to get. I'm gonna get mojoed back together. So it'll be this week coming up. Grant's going to end up pretty Rabo in some giant mech suit. So, Brad, are you going to the Ottawa teams tournament? I don't know yet. We're, we're trying to figure out everything that I'm going to. Because I'm going to Anna's next weekend. Not this weekend coming up, but next weekend. Uh, for a singles event. Then I'm going to Dayton for uh, a five-man team event uh, for the Jam Hammer guys. And then I'm going to, apparently I told uh, Kyle that I'm coming down to North Carolina in May. And then I'm going to do ATC and, you know, the big events after that. But I'm not sure everything that I'm going to that. Plus, I got to go to uh, yours. What, what, uh, sometime in the summer in Salt City. Salt City GT in uh, August 9th, 10th, and 11th. Yeah. So I got to rock. Be a blast. <laughs> got to rock that. <laughs> so 
I'm gonna I'm gonna well, I guess the I guess the team's turn in Dayton is the same time as Ottawa, so you won't be attending. <laughs> so no, he's not going to <laughs> <laughs> I, I just need to I need the system is what I need. <laughs> I need someone you need to need another adult to help you keep your calendar straight. <laughs> basically, yeah. <laughs> I mean the only thing I keep straight is like what my where I'm what doctors I'm going to. But uh you, you will be a worthy sacrifice. <laughs> The, uh, the the big thing is is that the same thing. I mean, it's in teams. Man, I, I love talking about teams. To be honest, I I love that you can get a better team. You get better list of teams. To be perfectly honest, because you just don't play certain shit. Mm-hmm. Well, I think you also get, especially on the eight man teams, you get to see two lists in those events that you may not see in a singles event ever. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, Brandon and Eloise bought me a calendar that said adulting. And, and then I never opened it. <laughs> and it sat next to my desk. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, you, you I think you see better better lists, more optimized lists, because you don't have to water down your list with if you can't play knights, you can't play hoarder, you can't play whatever the skew, you know what I mean? You just ignore it. And just, you know, a lot of times you defend and then just deny the thing that you can't play. (laughs) That is true. How is Lyle not on here complaining about not being on here? Tradition. (laughs) (laughs) Also, I have to, I'm meeting Lyle to get to Anna's. Literally having him pick me up in Brighton. I'm just going to abandon my car in like a Walmart parking lot or something. And I have no idea how I'm getting to Dayton. I'm assuming Snakes is driving. Well, I'm, I'm thinking of trying to... I, I was thinking because the, the guys in Canada asked me if we were coming up to the Ottawa teams. And I said, geez, really hadn't planned on it. Hadn't really thought about it yet. But I eight-person team's a little tough to throw together on the last minute kind of thing. But you never know. We might pull it out. I don't know, man. Like, I really... I think that, like, teams are... We're, we're embracing teams way more than I thought we would. America because to this year was the first big year yep. where we're running a lot of team events and I was really worried that people wouldn't <clears throat> show up in number but man they've been super popular and everybody's been crushing numbers wise so I'm super happy and I hope it keeps up it's just everywhere else has been already on the board that yeah it's nice to see people go oh well I only play singles I only play singles I play and then all of a sudden it's like oh team events are fun and we can be competitive and I can play something that I normally don't play. Oh, yeah, that's what I want to do. And it, it's been catching on really nice, which I'm really happy to see. It just gives us more options for play. Uh, KR, are we excited to see Orcs, Custodes, and CSM? CSM seem to be getting some cool stuff. Night Lords debut today on GW Stream Game. I'd love to see the Night Lords get some actual cool rules. Because their legions actually fucking bonkers with psychos, you know what I mean? They've got great stories and stuff. Uh, orcs, I'm super excited for. Uh, custodes wise, I just think custodes need more. I'd like to see custodes get just more models. To be honest with you, uh, you could break down a lot of different units into the stuff you see in the fluff because they have uh, more layers than they show right now. Yeah, I think custodes in game right now are in a, are, are okay. I don't oh, think they're, gonna, they're I, fine. I think they're a fine spot and in a, in a good top spot actually. Um, it'll be interesting to see what they do with them. I really do want to see them expand the line a little bit to like add, I'm going to say two to three more units. Uh, you know, get, I would like to see the uh, 30K transport for Sisters of Silence come into to 40K. That'd be kind of fun. Yeah, I mean, you could really, I mean, they have like fluff for days, you know what I mean? Like, that you could pull different units out from. So I was always wondering why they had such a small model uh, line. Because they could pull lots of different styles. Mm-hmm. I mean, KR goes, we don't need units. They just need detachment rolls. You're not wrong, but I do like just to have more stuff. I mean, they did add a lot of stuff with the Sisters of Silence. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that was a big deal. Yeah, I mean, and with with Custodes, with Orcs, um, I'm looking forward to both of those. The Chaos Space Marine one, I'm kind of hopeful with them getting eight detachments that there's something in there that interests everyone that plays chaos space marines because there's 
<laughs> that that book is the one that I think is going to end up being busted. It's just so hard to to balance that many detachments and not have one be crazy time. You know what I mean? It's it also interesting. If, go ahead. So, like the big thing we were the, like we were just kind of theory hammering a, a group of us chatting this weekend was like, what if four of those detachments were really restricted? Right? Like you have to have mark a slanesh, mark a corn, mark a nurgle, mark a zinch. Because then that changes up the army quite a bit on composition when you look at that, where it's like they're really just geared to be the mono god stuff. It would be really interesting. I would like to see that. And the thing is, is I'd like to see something for the... My my fear with balancing that many things is one slash two of the detachments slash legions becomes wildly better than everybody else. And then the other le detachments get punished when they up the points or something else to the other units inside there you know That's what i mean it, usually you get collateral damage you know what i mean these yeah. two things are doing too well and then you hack a couple of the units that are inside obliterators whatever you know what i mean and then the detachments that were doing bad are like hey man i was already doing shitty and you just screwed up my points you know what i mean so yeah. it's tough and the thing is is that it's super hard to balance the shit in the first place you know what i mean uh, let alone uh, a codex that's going to have that many detachments with that many, you know, trying to make that many special and different flavorful rules. Because that that is one of the things they go for first. They literally go for ideas and flavor before they even make rules. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They go with ideas. I, mean, I It'll be nice because I know a lot of people want to play Emperor's Children. So I hope they have an attachment that works for that. I'd like to see them just have straight up detachments that are for that. I mean, because there's a couple of people that aren't just going to get books. You know what I mean? You're probably not going to get an Emperor's Children straight book, you know, separate like the the uh, World Leaders and stuff like that or the Death Guard. So I think that they should have a straight up detachment that just is Emperor's Children. You know what I mean? It just give it to him in the book. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be it's going to be fun to see what they do. No matter what, new books are going to hit. The meta is going to get shaken up. You know, like we got in all our Tau limited edition box sets there today at the art store. And if you still need one, the art store, CNY.com available for sale. Um, they'll ship out tomorrow. If you buy one today. Um, and the models are super cool. Like I, you know, popped up, popped open a box and was looking at sprues and man, those models are gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And what all do you get in? Tell me what goes, comes in that box. Uh, so you basically get all the new crude stuff. I don't remember everything off the top of my head because I'm, I'm old. Um, There's but a you get shit the ton of new crude stuff, too. You get all new crude stuff. Um, everything in there is a new book. Um, you get the data cards, the Tau Codex, and basically the crude hunting pack, which is going to be a combat patrol at the same time. Um so it's really nice. I mean, for if you're buying it online, it's 187 bucks with the, you know, with the standard 15% off that GW maps things at. Um, and it's, you know, probably like 250 bucks worth of stuff in the box. So it's a really nice deal. It's actually really cool. And of course, Brandon remembers everything that's in it. Cause he's got it memorized right now. <laughs> I mean, still frosty with a space always knows what's going on with this group. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, two crew carnivores, uh, the flesh shaper, war shaper, three rampagers, and a crew tox. I'm actually wondering if those rampagers are going to make it into a decent amount of armies. Mm -hmm. They're like the Diet Coke of uh, Blood Crushers, but it's still like a nice counter charge for a Tau army. <clears throat> yeah. And again, it depends <laughs> on, like I always say, it depends on where the points shake out. Um, because we always know the points in the book don't stay the same typically uh, <laughs> when things hit, so we'll see where, where things hit. But it's going to be enjoyable. I I like seeing Tau shake up the meta, and now that they're getting a bunch of new units, it'll help them even more. And although I know a lot of people aren't fans of what they're doing with Crisis Suits, and I understand your frustrations, uh, I think that I'm kind of like that you're going to be able to move a nine units of Crisis Suits army. It I mean, you could bring that with retaliation and stuff, but I think we've been debating that. We're going to continue to debate it. Yep. Man, I think that you can you can just bring some real pain, and you can bring 
a lot of chaff in front of you, man. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just it, fill the board with nonsense and just blast people's faces away. Yes, yeah, uh, <laughs> Brandon, it's still frosty. I completely agree that crew talks are money. I was reading some of the stuff today because I like to like to wait until I got a book in hand to look at. And uh, yeah, crew talks look really, really good. True story. Plug, we are going to talk about it on Sunday, 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. A round robin of Tau aficionados are going to talk about it. And we're going to bring Liss. Nice. A little Easter oh, side discussion. <laughs> Corey, you bring up, you, you have the best quote, you have the best comments in chat that I could never say. <laughs> and please like and subscribe. It really helps the metrics. And keeps us going, gets us all noticed on the analytics. Also, throw down some comments, everybody. It, it actually, anything that engages with the stream actually helps quite a bit. Mm -hmm. I think there would be more to be oh, in ninth. Ooh, that's tough. They were just straight busted in ninth. So they're going to be less busted. I think the specialist players like Brandon and other people who focus on Tau are going to find those really strong combos and i can see a few and i'm not a, a strong tau player by any stretch of the imagination um i own them i play them but very limitedly and they are a really solid army and i think they've got some interesting builds i think they'll play on certain table styles like gw versus wtc versus uh player placed a little bit differently and the armies will be different across all of them it's going to be fun because you're going to see a variety of different lists i think three of the four detachments are playable in tournaments i think they're all good to be honest with you i think you can play the crew i think crew detachments super viable uh mm -hmm. i agree but uh uh as far as whether it's like it's it's less bust of the ninth for sure when they first came on a ninth that's if everybody forgets that that you got to play them for like a month and a half or whatever and they were just bonkersville uh with uncapped um indirect from air bursting and with Mont because you got you could get plus two AP basically total. And with full rerolls, oh my god, that shit was like answer. <laughs> this is so busted. Brandon, I firmly believe you're gonna win one with the crew detachment. I, I am convinced of it. <laughs> I hate shooting armies. You're probably not gonna be a big Tau fan then. <laughs> <laughs> I I think that Tau with this book will become very consistent in the top tables like right now you have to be a little bit of a specialist know how to play them uh i think that they have so many tools that they will be instantly shoot up to at least a plus tier in my opinion i i definitely think they're going to be in the a tier i think they'll probably be in the top four of armies um just overall I think they'll have that kind of win rate for a little while until everybody adjusts to it. But once you figure out and learn, like we've seen now in the meta, people have figured out how to play against Hypercrypt. People have figured out how to play against Canaptic Court. They're figuring out how to play against Custodes, and win rates are kind of stabilizing. Um, 100%. And it's stabilizing without nerfing them a bunch, too, which I enjoy. Yeah. And the thing is, is that GW has to be on the ready with nerfs but they don't have to implement the nerfs you know what i mean you have to wait yep. they should look at the data decide on what changes they'll make if the data doesn't change and then if the data does change just leave it alone and or just be ready to drop it that's like <laughs> somebody asked me what i thought was going to be the nerf for for necrons and i said i think you're going to see a minor points increase on satans and that's about it and i think that that's really you don't need a lot you know what i mean uh, people are especially, I mean, Hypercrypt really in super good army still, you know what I mean? But people have really just figured out slowly and surely how to play against it. Any of those armies that have four of Vildo are always going to feel sometimes really disgusting. Custos, Necrons, you know what I mean? Yep. Uh, they can high roll the shit out of you. Sometimes it happens. That's four of life, man. Farsight is still the best melee unit in the army. Uh, it should be because of the fact that he literally has Stormbringer in one hand. So he's cheating right now. He's like, I'm very good at melee. Why? Mainly because I have an artifact in one hand. <laughs> it seems good. <laughs> so it's one of those things where you're like, wow, wonder why this dude's doing well. 
could be because he's cutting through everyone. Yeah. yeah that, that could be the case. Yeah, but I, I'm, I'm interested to see all the lists that come out for Tau as people tinker and play and get it on TTS and those first couple weeks of it being out. And I'm not saying it's out this Saturday fully because I know there's a lot of places that wait until the book is fully released. Do you, do you, do you know the answer to that? I mean, if you, if you can't say, don't say, you know what I mean? But I just, I want to, do I know the off, do, <clears> I know, <throat> do I know the date rack of the codex itself? Yeah. The, the actual, like when you can buy the codex, by so itself the codex by itself gw hasn't released that information yet i don't know when it is but the typical thing has been four weeks after it becomes available that seems to be their typical monicum at least so far that kind of stinks that means that you're not going to be there's a lot of tournaments that aren't going to let that go through yeah i mean it, it's nice this one's a lot different than a lot of the other limited edition codexes where they were just not available you can still find them right now, which is nice. Yeah, but it, it will, there there is a lot of places that won't let you use the 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 army until it's in wide release. Just you know, what I mean that the base codex right. is out. <clears throat> yeah, which I do want margaritas for the crew party. Hundred percent. I would like to see a lot of crew out there. I, I I actually really like crew for teams. I think it's a fun team army. Fish yeah. tacos for the doubt release. Cowfish. I still love that there's that restaurant down in uh, Disney. Cowfish. It's a town restaurant, of course. Uh, let's plug some stuff. Talk to me about the Salt City GT. <clears throat> so, the Salt City happening August 9th, 10th, and 11th. Seven rounds of 40K. Three Friday, two Saturday, two Sunday. Uh, with Brian's birthday party being on Saturday night. Surprise, mm -hmm. surprise. Um, going to be an absolute blast. Good time. We're going to be using GW terrain layout. Um, I have so much terrain that just came in, uh, to, to fit the proper layouts. Um, so it's going to be a good time on that. Of course, we also have old world, uh, using the legends armies and their legacy, whatever they call them. Uh, there will be AOS 4.0 tournament going on, um, along with kill team and Marvel crisis protocol. It's going to be a good time. Uh, tickets are selling. Uh, hop in now. The earlier I know, if I can expand, I always want to try to. Um, so if you're interested in coming, let me know. Sign up today. GT.com. 40, 40K Lorecast. Go there and listen to me wax poetically about the lore with Saudi and I. Comes out every week, same time. You know who's in charge of that? Not me, because it would definitely not be the same time every week. <laughs> so everyone uh shogun show you is amazing uh invincible season two i would not say nine out of ten uh, mm. yeah invincible season two so far i think it's like a seven but... yeah it's a, it's, it's a pretty big jump off it's still good don't get me wrong but it's just invincible season one was fantastic uh shogun by the way is 11 out of 10 fucking yeah. that, that thing has been bonkers feel good you're looking for a good watch. Ooh, Shogun is killing it. Also, good novel. <laughs> so great novel. Uh, on that note, everybody, appreciate you hanging out with us. As always, like and subscribe. Queens wave our way out of here. And till next time.